This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Mark Magnuson. Hello and welcome into Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Mark Magnuson. Today is Monday, October 14th, 2024, and we're so glad you can join us for today's episode. In today's show, I will be joined by Michael Porter with John Deere. He's going to tell us about some new tillage tools from John Deere. But first, let's get a word from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soybean Checkoff. You're watching Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Today on Ag Matters PM, I am joined by Michael Porter of John Deere. He's going to tell us all about some new tillage tools from John Deere. Mark Magnuson for the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm here today with Michael Porter. We are at John Deere at Farm Progress Show 2024. And we're in front of some tillage tools that we want to tell you about today. Let's start off, Michael, with the CC series. What is this new piece of equipment directly behind us? Yeah, so this is our new Coulter Chisel series. So a new product from John Deere ground up. Um, we're really filling out our tillage portfolio and a coulter chisel is kind of exactly what it sounds like. Coulters in the front that are going to help size all that residue that may be left in the field from harvest. And then the chisel points are going to then help to pin and bury that, uh, that residue under the ground to help it break down over the winter, but also serve with those chisel points as a way to break up the compaction zone really in that seven, uh, seven or eight inch area that we're targeting uh, and do it as a highly productive tool. So for farmers in the state of Iowa, would this be a tool specifically targeted to a certain subset or would this be a wide ranging tool that could be used by a lot of farmers? Yeah, wide ranging tool for sure for a lot of different farmers. And really what, you know, kind of the target audience for this is customers who want to get a lot of their uh, primary tillage, breaking up that compaction zone, bearing that residue done faster than they had before. So really targeting that like seven inches deep at seven miles an hour will allow this machine to do about 50 acres more per day than our traditional combo ripper 2730. So it's going to do all that while burning a lot less fuel and a lot of models spread across the horsepower range. Uh, so really any tractor can do this, do this job. So how's the efficacy been of this new piece of equipment? Have you been happy with the performance? Yeah, no, it's a great tool because not only do we break up all that, bury it, break up compaction, but if you look here on the back, we also have a finishing unit on there to make sure it's nice and level, which allows those customers in the spring to come back and plant right behind this, not have to do maybe another spring pass if they don't need to. And then right next to it, we have the MT series. Could you tell us about that, please? Yeah, so the MT series is our minimum till ripper, so replacing our 2100 series. Uh, so this tool is, is really designed to go super deep into the ground, 12 to 16 inches, break up that really deep compaction while not disturbing the top layer. So really leaving the top uh, clean from erosion, things like that, just going really deep to break that up, allow water and nutrients to permeate into the ground. So if you're thinking about maybe suggesting the MT series for someone, what would that type of farmer be? Yeah, it'd be really anyone who has maybe a lot of compaction deep into the ground. So um, depends on the soil conditions, but maybe a really heavy traffic zone for grain carts or uh, maybe a heavily loaded combine and really worried about breaking up that big, that deep, deep layer, um, but also are worried about things like erosion. They don't want to turn over all that soil in the fall and then have it get blown away in the spring. This allows them to go deep, break it up without disturbing that top layer. And Michael, all of these features we've talked about today, all of these things that these tools are capable of, I'm always interested when it comes to the development of this new equipment, is it more driven by what the farmer brings to you as things that the farmer would like to see or the ideas that John Deere's coming up with trying to stay ahead of everything? Yeah, it's a little bit of both, but definitely listening to customers is probably the number one. I mean, customers tell us that, man, they're having a lot hard time getting across all their acres at the fall after harvest um, and maybe don't need to go so deep. And so really this tool is kind of that right in the middle between, you know, maybe some sort of a disc in the in the fall and then uh, or a subsoiler like that, but really allows them to do primary tillage in the in the fall 
um, and get it done quicker. So we listened to customers when they told us that. And then we talk about the MT series. They said, we need something that lasts, the wear parts last a little bit longer. So we worked with the development team to find a new wear shin for that product that lasts twice as long as previous. They want to be able to get through not just one season, but multiple seasons and not have to stop at the, you know, halfway through to replace wear parts. So again, a lot of that drives that conversation. And then we kind of take that with our engineering group to find what would be the best solution to fit those customer needs. So Michael, just to wrap up here today, a lot of information we've covered here, a lot of features of these new products. So how can customers, potential customers, learn more? Yeah, so first thing would be to reach out to your local John Deere dealer uh, and then also Deere.com. He is Michael Porter with John Deere, live from the Farm Progress Show 2024. Michael, thanks so much for taking the time to tell us about these new tools. Very exciting and interesting stuff. Have a great rest of the Farm Progress Show. Yeah, thanks. You too. Thank you to Michael Porter of John Deere for joining today's show, telling us about those new tillage tools in the John Deere portfolio. And it is time now for our closing market summary. We are joined now by Robin Schmall of agmarket.net. At the end of the trading day here on Monday, joined by Robin Schmall of agmarket.net. Robin, how did we trade in the grains today? Well, under pressure, um, which is understandable because of the harvest pace that's progressing and what we're hearing of yields coming out and some corn being piled on the ground, uh, you know, quite a bit of soybeans in, in bins. And, um, you know, it's we, we saw in the commitment of traders report, uh, we saw the corn shorts by the funds or managed money decreasing again on the last report. Seasonally, that happens, but maybe a little bit, um, if you want to say premature, or, or maybe maybe uh, uncanny for this time of year, at least especially looking at this year with our yields. Uh, corns, corn shorts positions are, are, are down to the lowest they've been since August 2023. That was on the Commitment Traders Report, which was as of Tuesday last week. Soybean shorts are the smallest since May. So they've covered those short positions somewhat on a seasonal situation, but uh, possibly since um, we we had that report coming out, uh, or maybe now we're going to see a little bit more adding to those short positions, um, like wheat. Wheat actually, the SRW and HRW wheat shorts actually increased thirty one thousand three hundred eleven to two thirty one thousand three hundred eleven short positions. Uh, so. Uh, we're just looking at, um, you know, a harvest pressure. And uh, once we get further through that pressure, I think we could have a delayed potential um, post-harvest rally, if you want to say, because there's going to be a lot of grain around that's got to be moved first before we could really see much of that happening. Now, that's just, that's just speculation on my part. We didn't have any export inspections today. Uh, or we won't have any crop progress because of the holiday, Columbus Day. Those things will be released on tomorrow. So the trade didn't didn't have the export inspections to, to look at. They don't have the crop progress to look at. So we'll see that um, basically on tomorrow. Uh, China, China soybean imports declined in September to uh, down 6.3%. They total 11 0.37 million metric ton. Now the January to September imports by China totaled 81.85 million metric ton. That's up 8.1% above a year ago. So uh, and that's just not from the U.S., but that's China imports overall. Now there were freeze warnings that took place uh, yesterday or last night, I should say, and they're looking at some of that for tonight. I, the trade really doesn't care about it at this point in time. Otherwise, we maybe would have seen some support, but the decrease uh, pressure, selling pressure on the on the complex, other than soybean meal, soybean meal actually closed higher. But you know, November means drop below ten dollars uh, on the futures, and that's the first time it's been down there in about a month since September sixteenth, and the uh, corn uh, that fell to the 50% retracement level today from the previous low to the high we had established here about two weeks ago. And uh, so we've come back 50% retracement on that. So that doesn't really bode well for prices 
uh, going forward here, at least as we progress through more of the harvest situation. And in Brazil, some of the uh, rain events seems to be uh, a little less likely to remain dry as it is. So we're seeing a little bit of switch there. So that's also adding to some of the pressure. On the other side of the ag marketplace, how did the livestock trade today? Well, cattle were higher. Um, feeder cattle leading the charge. Uh, the traders were assessing the potential for cash this week. Uh, last week, we had southern cattle trade a dollar higher. Northern cattle were steady. 20% uh, of last week's trade were for deferred delivery. So that's a little bit higher than we saw the last two weeks. Uh, but I don't know if that's really going to have a whole lot of impact on the market as such. We're going to have to be looking at the box beef prices. Now, midday box beef choice was up $1.59, select up $1.73. If that holds, we are in, in essence seeing a little bit of stronger demand that has been developed here over the last two weeks. And uh, that could be going further to to you know, causing the, the packers to have to bid up a little bit. They've been trying to cut some of their slaughter pace in order to limit what they're going to have to pay out in the country. But really the feedlots have banded together basically and held out for higher prices. Now, I don't know how much longer the feedlots can continue to hold out or roll those cattle back because weights are higher and they're gonna to have to move some of those cattle even though grain prices might be a little cheaper. So. Uh, th that's what's being assessed in the market right now. So it it limited what we saw an in increase. Now feeder cattle were up th uh, triple digits. There's good demand for feeder cattle. And so that's continuing. Auctions are seeing higher prices in general. Now on the hog side, hog futures were under pressure. Uh, pork cutouts were higher uh, at midday and up $1.88, but the market really didn't focus on that at all because there's concern over continued support, uh, consumer support in the market, continued support by traders in the market. Uh, we did add, or they did add quite a few long positions on the commitment to traders report, bringing them within about 20,000 contracts of the, the record long positions that hogs had seen back in 2023. So we're getting up to that point where anything that's a little bit negative could trigger maybe some Katie bar the door selling. Uh, whether today was the start of that or whether it's just a retracement, we'll have to see as tomorrow and, and the week unfolds. Robin Schmall of agmarket.net, our guest here on Monday. Robin, what's the best way for our viewers to get in touch for more marketing information? They can call me directly at 877-256-3253 or go to agmarket.net. There's a toll-free 844 number there. Uh, they can feel free to call in. Thanks so much for the time here today, Robin. We always appreciate it and have a great rest of your week. All right. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be on. Thank you to Robin Schmall of agmarket.net for joining today's show. And it is time now for a check of the closing numbers, which you can find anytime under the markets tab of our website at iowaagnet.com. December corn closes down seven and a half at 408 and a quarter. November soybeans down nine and a half at 996 even. December soybean meal up a quarter of a cent at 315.30. December soybean oil down a dollar forty-three at forty-one ninety. Chicago wheat down thirteen and three quarters at five eighty-five and a quarter. Minneapolis wheat down seventeen and a quarter at six twenty-six and a half. Kansas City hard red wheat down fourteen and a half at five ninety even. December oats down seven even at three seventy-two and three quarters. On the Merck, October live cattle down 35 cents at 188.25. October feeder cattle down 62 cents at 249.12. December lean hogs down $1.85 at 75.80. December pork cutout down 10 cents at 91.12. Class 3 milk is unchanged at 22.53. That wraps up our market coverage for today here on AMPM, and that brings us to the end of today's show. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook, X, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Don't forget as well to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification icon as well to let you know whenever we have any new videos available. You can listen to our morning, midday, and closing market podcast, which can be found anywhere you find your favorite podcast at Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. Also, don't forget to check out our daily Iowa Ag Matters podcast. From the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network Studios in Des Moines, I'm Mark Magnuson. For Dustin Huffman, Andy Peterson, and Riley Smith, we thank you for watching.
This has been Ag Matters PM.